please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. X2 X-Men United Movie Thoughts Not quite the last 40 minutes, but before the, the very end wrap-up, the quote-unquote last 40 minutes of the movie is basically one major action scene, so quite like a Terminator climax like that. You know, we have a lot of different types of action scenes, but at the end of the day, there's just one objective. In the case of this, you know, they have to get into the Alkali Lake base, they have to grab the, the X-Kids and get safely back out. That's, that's the only thing they're actually trying to, to do. You know, along the way, Magneto tries to kill humans instead of mutants, but at the end of the day, yeah, that is what it boils down to. The, the, the water is a great ticking clock. There's no way they can stop the, you know, the, the pressure. It's just about getting out in time. Now, in, you know, in the comics, the, you know, William... William Stryker is not actually responsible for Weapon X, but it does work quite well here. And the... In God Loves Man Kills, Xavier's also captured his powers, neutralized the technology, and he's made to believe that at least one mutant is you know, is with him, he is tricked into attacking, you know, even killing other mutants. Now in the comics, it's not that he is, that he thinks he's just fighting them. In the comics, he's made, you know, made to intentionally kill as a born again, break you down, build you back up kind of thing. And, you know, they use a machine based on Cerebro, Cyclops is there as well. Now, in the comic, he's only evil in Xavier's mind. For those who missed it, I've seen some online who weren't, who didn't realize. When you first see, you know, right before he, right before Cyclops blasts them, when you see, you know, Jean, Magneto, and Mystique walking down the the hallway right before you see him shoot, you see Cyclops' neck and you see the scar from the, the mind control fluid there that you've also seen on Magneto and Nightcrawler. I took just a few notes while watching this time. The you know, most of the notes I made before watching it. When, you know, when Stryker is talking about how his wife, you know, she she took a drill in order to bore the images out. She'd seen Ben Carson in the 2016 debates, and she figured, evidently, brain surgery is not as difficult as we've been led to believe. And, you know, they're, they're at the end, you know, Stryker you know, tells Wolverine, you're a survivor, you're gonna make it. And Xavier, you know, they're, they're talking about, you know, could, could we have saved Jean? And Xavier says, in the past, she might have let us, or other salads. In the comic, the, the, you know, the culmination is this church service, since, you know, 
it's is basically Jerry Falwell, and you know Stryker is riling the the crowd up to you know to the point where they threat to attack the people there who belong to a group that they hate. It's a lot like a Trump rally, except the cops actually protect the hated minority present. And in in the comic, Stryker doesn't knowingly work with a mutant. In fact, when Anne Reynolds turns out to be a mutant, he tosses her to her death, which is, you know, that would have been the reveal in the movie of, you know, the character who is now Yuriko. And, you know, they decided, let's have a kick-ass mutant there and instead of this, yeah. The climax here is way too similar to that of the first one. A leader of one of the teams of the mutants uses their powers to excuse me run a machine to kill a lot a large group of people in this case mutants a mutant is forced to use their power to run the machine eventually you even have magneto you you know using his power to get some another mutant to run the machine to kill people i can totally understand wanting to do you know, God kills God. That would be the Old Testament. I'm not getting into religion here. God loves man kills as the second movie, but then they should have made that decision, you know, either they should have made that decision when they made the first one and then made the first one's climax very different, or they should have altered the climax of God loves man kills, you know. A as it is, basically both movies have a climax fairly similar to you now, in this case, even more similar. The setup to the the fake cerebro is quite good, though the you know the the how you know Magneto helped build it, which they even restate in this, you know, how how could it? Well, I helped him build it, remember? And the, you know, we're told very early on, you know, right at the, at, as one of the very first things we see, you know, the, you know, Xavier's in the machine, we see the, the individual plates, which I suppose we just couldn't quite see in the first one. It's one of those things where the, the second movie decides something that then must have been the case in the first movie as well, I guess. But anyway, you know, and you 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 know, you see him, you know, oh see, now that I'm here, I'm connected to, to everyone. And and then I think, yeah, it's both said there and then they restated later, which is, you know, that's that's fine. It, they they maybe felt that they needed to restate it for people. But the the you know, he says, you know, Logan says, can't you just concentrate harder? If I wanted to kill him, yes. So, you know, gradually we, it, it's not like the movie just suddenly dumps all this information. By the way, Xavier can connect his mind to everyone on Earth in the machine. If he concentrates hard enough, he can kill the people he's connected to. You know, all these things, they're, they're gradually set up over the course of it. You know, when, when you see Stryker with Magneto, then you find out, oh, he has an interest in Cerebro, and then he finally sees it in person in the mansion, and yeah. And, you know, Xavier is excused from the climax because of Cerebro, just like in one. The, the Cerebro really is way too easily, you know, there's, there's not, it's not that difficult for the people who really badly want to get in to actually get in. You know, it, it can be done with shape-shifting powers and it can be done with technology. So, yeah, they, they really, that's, that's a bit of a problem. And, you know, where in the first movie, basically, you know, it's it's the Brotherhood versus powerful people, non-mutants, 
and then this movie you know in part it's kind of you could say it's the response to mutants attacking humans with their powers and it's also you know as Magneto pointed out suddenly human beings are attacking you know mutants who are never a threat to them you know why are they why are they taking the children what what good could that possibly do and why are they just going into the mansion and you know using guns forcing their way in if you know if if what they think they're going to get is you know if they think that there's you know this group of people might have some connection you know have you know maybe have you know have have some of them like make a statement I, is interrogation now that's that's when you've arrested a anyway you know just talk to them ask them do you know this man if if striker had actually gone in you know but that's of course that's not what he wants to happen but if striker just wanted to get you know hypothetically let's say striker wasn't the one who got nightcrawl to do it if he just wanted to find out you know do they know nightcrawler and such you know the no one at the mansion has claimed responsibility for the assassination attempt and it's not you know the the you know they just know about you know oh there's a jet and it comes out of the basketball court they have no reason to think that they're a threat yes they have abilities but that doesn't mean that they're a threat just because one of them is but this is what you know when someone powerful has the excuse and you know the the and it it legitimately is even you know the the attack yes there was an attack and people got hurt but the attack was actually you know you know that's going to sound like 911 trutherism but you know in reality when the attack happened the you know the administration the bush administration very quickly you know went into iraq and you know they they hurried through things that they wanted to happen so you know i'm not saying that you know obviously they didn't do it the hijackers did it the 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 government did not do it you know but once it happened the you know someone powerful and bigoted took advantage of it and made life a lot worse for an entire group of people almost none of whom who had anything to do with it they yet again have a gunshot fake out and this one is so much worse because it's with a child you know or prepubescent at least no yeah the first one that is a that is legitimately a child you know it turns out to be a tranquilizer yes the that fake out is in the comic and yes I hate it there as well basically the you know the second you see it you think that you know and just in the seconds leading up to it you can tell that you know this guy is not there to you don't think that he's going to bring out a taser you think he is going to bring out a weapon and the the you know the the president said you know we the, the last thing people need to see is a is a dead is the body of a mutant child on the six o'clock news you know and so you think okay well maybe he's gonna kill the kid and then actually bring him clean up after themselves or maybe they're just straight up ignoring what the president said but then yeah it turns out oh it's just tranquilizer and I do not buy for a second that that is a tranquilizer gun maybe one could you know today I buy that you could make one that looks like that but back then something that looked like that that is a gun. That is a 
actual f bullet firing gun. And I don't really believe that a gun firing burst or automatic, it's not entirely clear. If, you know, there's at least once where it's just one. And I don't think we ever see it more than about three. But, you know, even burst, it doesn't look like a burst. It doesn't behave like a burst gun otherwise. And, and again, today, yes, you could make something that looks like that and that behaves the way it does in the movie. And, you know, in, in the comic as well, you know, Stryker is shocked to see he has a mutant son. His wife is dead by the time the, you know, the, the story itself starts. And, you know, those two things are why he hates mutants. But there, he actually killed the child and snapped his wife's neck. You know, the, the moment he saw the infant and the infant didn't pass. And the, you know, the, later on he, you know, he tries to, to suicide with the two of them. The, you know, by, by blowing up the, the car that they crashed in, but he's blown clear and, you know, later blames his wife, not himself, for his kid being a mutant and then felt cold to kill all mutants. You know, the, the, but like in the movie, you know, the, his kid is later back, you know, he got better. Nobody dies and stays dead in comics other than Uncle Ben. The, the, the very end, you know, promises that we will indeed see a Dark Phoenix and, yeah, I'll, I'll get into what a huge disappointment that was, the, when I cover the next movie. The setup to the the Phoenix stuff in this movie is mostly good. The how her powers are growing and getting out of control, the the fiery eyes and such. I'm not going to go into detail about her sacrificing herself. You know, right outside the jet. I feel like there are good arguments on both sides, what it boils down to is they wanted to do Dark Phoenix. That means Jean Grey has to sacrifice herself for the, you know, to, to save others. And they just maybe didn't handle it the, the best way. Yuriko is such a wasted character. The and, and of a really good character as well. We barely get to know her at all in this movie. We don't, we're not told a lot about Sabretooth, but we do get a real sense of who he is. The, you know, Yuriko, we just see that, you know, she's, she's strong, and then we eventually see that she has these powers, and she's a good fighter. That's that's it. We never see any even hint of her personality, mind controlled or otherwise. You know, they they don't even they they just barely hint at a connection between her and Wolverine. All they really seem to have in common are the adamantium skeleton. And not only do they have a perfect setup for connecting the two, they basically contradict a pretty major element, namely that the project leader of Weapon X was responsible for, I think, also giving Yuriko her animation. It was, it was something like that, at least. You know, the, the, we don't see her take special interest in Wolverine. I agree that they couldn't have done much because the two barely meet at all, you know, but nevertheless, you know, they didn't have to pick a character who had such history with him if they weren't going to set it up like that. You know, the... I, I find that she's... You know, I don't think Sabretooth was a waste in the first one. I already talked about that in the video for the first one. 
but I really do think Yuriko, Yuriko is. There is no further explaining. The, the way the, you know, if they were to ever do another movie where they brought her back, they would have to contradict stuff in this to make it meaningful between the two. Otherwise, you know, if, if they make a movie where she is a major player and he is a major player, and, you know, yeah, and, and it keeps X2 in canon, well, goody, you have someone who can't remember the other and someone who's mind-controlled to not feel anything specific towards the other fighting. It's still completely meaningless. And it's also kind of uncomfortable how we're not necessarily supposed to be glad, but at least relieved that she dies at the end of their fight. When she was never established to be evil, earlier on we actually see the horror in her eyes when, as she's waking up from the mind control, it's, you know, the there's an easy fix for this. Basically just, you know, they, they could, you know, work in some of the comic background. How about right before they fight, she wakes up from the mind control and looks around and it's clear she's properly woken up and you know yeah actually right before they fight striker starts to you know starts walking away and leaves yuriko there because she, you know striker and yuriko are both aware she's going to fight wolverine now and striker expects her to win and she probably expects to win as well how about right as he's turning away she starts waking up and now you know last time we saw her start to wake up which I also just briefly she's waking up from being mind control she's looking around and like what is going on why does she just let this guy grab you know grab the back of her head and even if she doesn't know that that's going to be mind control if you're waking up and you're looking around you're like where am I what is going on wouldn't you try to fight someone rushing over towards you like that? It's not, and, and again, there's an easy fix. Just if he approached her and she started to, to back up a little bit and he said, it's okay, it's okay, Shh. it's okay, I'm going to help you. And then he uses the thing. You know, she, if she punched him in the face, she would break his nose with ease. Why doesn't she resist him going over and grabbing? Yeah, anyway. You know, you have her start to wake up from mind control, look around, and, okay, now you have Wolverine relieved. He's not going to have to fight someone who's being mind controlled against her will. And, you know, before you say, oh, but he didn't know, there's no way that he didn't know about the mind control by that point. He spent that much time with the other X-Men who do know about the mind control, and, yeah, obviously he knows about mind control, and there's no real reason why... He, yeah, anyway, if nothing else, he could figure out, okay, that's, she was being mind controlled, now she isn't anymore. But then she looks straight at him, and, like, maybe, maybe it's just that she is willing to protect Stryker because he gave her adamantium. Maybe it's because when Wolverine escaped from Weapon X, he hurt or even killed someone she cares about, and this could very easily be established by flashback. You know, she's waking up, she looks around, she looks directly at him, and then we get the, these PTSD flashbacks that he's been getting in the, the movies, and, you know, he's literally, he's just gotten a few, so we, you know, we're still in that mindset, we're, we're ready for more of that, and, yeah, just, you know, movie shorthand for these two people care, care about each other is a quick glimpse of like a hug or you know them them looking at each other and then you know yeah show a, show a quick glimpse of them hugging or the like and then show Wolverine waking up stabbing the guy running off after he's run off she comes out and sees her her love there and you know there now it's not this really uncomfortable kind of she doesn't even know what she like we we already know that mind control made magneto reveal secrets 
that could be used to hurt Xavier and the students. It made Nightcrawler the, you know, I forget, I, I want to say that Nostalgia is shaking her loose can, she called, she says like he's a, he's a puppy dog or something in, in X2. It turned him into an assassin and it made Cyclops try to murder Jean. So yeah, we have every reason in the world to think that when she's not being mind controlled, she probably has no interest in hurting Wolverine. So yeah, it's yeah. It's it's again the you know, the bad guys are using mind control and that's you know, the and and so they're they're you know, they're they're making people do things they don't want to know. They they don't want to do and that you know, having their cake and eating to oh, one of those mind controlled you know mutants are actually, you know, we're gonna get to see fight Wolverine. The Obviously, I do like the fight itself, and the, that it's set in the adamantium binding room and ends up with Wolverine actually using the, the adamantium also. And I, I once wondered why the, the adamantium is fresh. You know, you clearly see it boiling. You know, who's, who's paying for the heating bill? Apparently, originally, Archangel was supposed to have been given, you know, the, the wings from from there, and you know they they, so so yeah, that's. Although I, they could probably have rewritten to where it wasn't still fresh there, but you know it's it's possible that he had plans to use it. And, and we just don't see that, you know. And the, you know, her spinning is really nicely done, and it actually makes sense, unlike when Storm does it in the third movie. I realize that Storm has also done a movie like that in the comics. Again, there, it actually works. But, you know, of course she spins like that. It makes, you know... It's a really dangerous way to approach him, and it's different from anything we saw in the first one that you know anyone with claws did. And her really long adamantium nails is a cool kind of you know upgrade to Sabretooth's nails in the first one. And we see her heal. It's even you know face cuts that she's healing, like Wolverine is seen doing too, and they're, you know, and that means there's some something of a level playing field, so the fight is them stabbing and cutting each other over and over, and you can clearly tell they are in pain. Now, in the comic, she's apparently a cyborg, not a mutant. You know, so far, the yeah, largely the, the X-Men movies are about mutants. There there aren't particularly any variations. You know, any other. You know, there have been a few robots, but other than that, yeah. And the robots are decidedly the mutant killing kind of robot. And, you know, Yuriko is almost the only evil mutant who actually fights. You know, Jason is incredibly powerful and a huge threat, but the scene is him sitting there. You know, it's not a... Yeah, it's it's not a cool fight between... Yeah, you know, it's, it's legitimate. It's, it's impressive that we take it so seriously, because at the end of the day, Xavier and Jason's scenes are actually just you know, two middle-aged bald dudes, or, or yeah, I guess Jason's only balding, looking intently towards the other. You know, it's it's 
yeah, it's good filmmaking and great acting that makes us be able to take the scene seriously. But, you know, yeah, just sits there and also, you know, that, that kind of feels like they need to give Storm something to do. Nightcrawler as well, but he already teleported in to the kids, although we only see the actual teleporting in the deleted scenes. And Cyclops is a threat for maybe a minute or so. You know, it's... Yeah, I just really feel like there's there's way too little evil mutant fighting, which is one of the big draws of the X-Men concept. And, you know, Magneto goes in and, you know, stops Jason from having Xavier kill all, you know, mutants, and then changes it to where it's humans instead. And... You know, originally it was going to be like in the comic where Magneto just helps fix it and then just flies away without any, you know, it it makes good sense that they would, you know, and and it was there's also part of it that they wanted to reassert, no, no, he is he is a villain, he is one of the big villains here. It's not, you know, let's let's not make him too, yeah, and and that's also you know on the evil mutant front. From the start of the movie to the end of the movie, the only real status change for Magneto is that he, you know, he frees himself from, the, you know, with Mystique's help. He's, he's freed from the, the, the prison and he gains one new recruit. And that's it, you know, the, the... You know, obviously in the first one he loses a bunch of his guys because it's, you know, yeah, it's chewing through and it's possible that it took him a long time to assemble that team, but it does, you know, again, we've, like as you said, we've just reasserted that he is one of the big villains here. He is, he is genocidal and he's left with just, you know, the, at, at least Pyro's also, like Magneto himself, fairly powerful because at the end of the day, Mystique, she's, you know, she's incredibly able. She's, you know, she can use computers and such like you wouldn't believe. And her ability comes in incredibly handy. But at the end of the day, you know, you're not, yeah, the, her abilities are not going to allow him to very easily, you know, the, the, if Magneto had, you know, yeah, in, in the first movie, if he hadn't had, you know, Toad and Sabretooth, the, the train station scene would have gone very differently. The, I got to thinking Stryker would probably have been fine with the assassination attempt working out because really the you know the reason it doesn't is that the one guard wasn't completely knocked out and he shoots you know he hits Nightcrawler once and shoots a couple of extra times because he has a gun and he likes to shoot if if Nightcrawler hadn't been stopped, you know, Stryker would have just been going to the vice president to authorize the strike, and that would have served his purposes quite well. Now the you know in in another thing that some people I've seen some people ask online that is answered in the or yeah in this case is something that's answered in the deleted scenes. You know what happened to the ex kids that you know were were sent through the the hidden passage. Rogue is seen in a deleted scene telling them, you know, run to the end of this, then run through the woods, and the first house you get to, tell them that you've run away from your boarding school, and whatever you do, don't tell them that you're a mutant. I feel like it would have been really good if she had also said you ran away from your boarding school because they mistreated you or something, they abused you, but, you know, 
yeah, that's, you know, it's, it's too bad it was cut, but, you know, that's often some really good stuff is cut. And, you know, some asked why, why does Ronnie, Ronnie call the cops on his own brother? You know, he, like, quite, you know, we have to remember at this point in the, you know, in the movie series, everybody's afraid of mutants. You know, the, the most recent thing he's heard about mutants is that one tried to kill the president. You know, he has only just found out that his brother is one, and he hasn't spent a lot of time with his brother for a while, and yes, he's jealous of his, of the attention that his brother is getting. And, you know, I don't think that the, the parents could have seen coming that Ronnie would actually call the cops. They just thought, you know, he's, he's just upset. He's, it's, you know, now... The, the guard with, with Magneto, Mr. Lario. It's important that we don't like him, but when he, you know, he's, he's dealing with Magneto, who is evil, but we do feel some sympathy for him. You know, in Lario's defense, he didn't see the, the, you know, the opening of the first movie that establishes why Magneto hates, you know, humanity the, the way he does and, and fears that, you know, basically it will be like the, the, it, there will be another holocaust, there will be a mutant holocaust, you know, or a, it's not a holocaust of mutant, Any, anyway, so, yeah, you know, how how does the movie make sure that you know we that we that we you know dislike Lauro for mistreating you know at the end of the first movie Magneto is stopped just short of committing genocide or, or I suppose it's more mass murder since they're yeah yeah you know yeah massacring these dozens of people many of whom are the most powerful people, you know, on the planet. You know, Lario may not know that, but there is some chance that he does. So, yeah, how, you know, how do we, how, how does the movie make sure that not only do we not like him, but that we're, you know, cheering Magneto on as he's, killing this man and breaking out of prison. You know, we don't know for sure if Magneto kills the other guards, and we have no, you know, we don't know them at all. But, you know, clearly he dies. He dies right in front of us. We see his, you know, his body as his, you know, yeah, as as he's dying, we see that reflected in one of the, the metal balls that Magneto forms. You know, it's it's not even that it's like this touching moment of, oh, he's, no, no, we, we see it reflected on one of these badass metal balls that Magneto is shaping. And then we see him fall, f you know, face, you know, just face plant on the floor. You know, it's, yeah, we're, and, and we're, we're cheering Magneto on as he's doing this. He... So, so yeah, how, do, how does the movie do this? Lario helps the mind control of Magneto, and he seems to have absolutely no problem with doing so. You know, and, and the mind control, it's, it's very nicely done. It's, you know, it is essentially torture. He is, you know, and, yeah, the, the way it's filmed and written, it, yeah, and the, you know, he's also clearly willing to use violence on Magneto without it being in response to something. He he grabs his, you know, when when Magneto says, you know, ah, there's something different here, and you know, Lario immediately grabs the the baton. And of course, what is movie shorthand for 
do not like this character. He's overweight. He's dumb and not in a sweet way. And in general, he's not attractive. Yeah. When the when Wolverine and the the three students drive off, you know, the the you know, Wolverine grabs the little, you know, X phone. And you know, it's it's clear that he doesn't quite understand how to work the phone. And it yeah, it looks a little you know, we can't quite figure out how how is that supposed to be working anyway, but why don't they just get another phone? You know, the 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 editing rooms abridged script points out, let's stop at a gas station, and to which Logan responds, No, every phone in the world doesn't work right now. And it yeah, there's no reason for them to end up quite like that. Why you know yeah, why why stop over at you know Bobby's house without at least telling the the you know the Storm and Jean don't know where they are at all. You know, at least at the very least call them before you go anywhere else that yeah, and and then also, you know, one thing is the gas station phone Bobby's parents probably have a a you know, a phone that isn't, you know, futuristic and, and weird. And it's not even, if they didn't want the characters to communicate with, you know, they, they didn't want Storm and Jean to talk to Logan right then, have radio problems with the jet or something like, you know, just, you know, he tries to call them and then one of them is like, ah, I, I can tell someone's trying to call, but there's there's some problems. Can you fix it? It'll take a few hours. There, done. You don't have that dumb little writing bit that's really really obvious. And the the only reason there are really problems with the police one, you know, they they are the the one guy who shoots when Wolverine. I mean, you can you can kind of understand why, but it is still this kind of well, wait, why is, you know, yeah, Wolverine didn't actually do anything, but Wolverine actually, he knows that the police are there. It's not like he doesn't. He just saw, he, you know, yeah, saw and or heard the rustling or something. And then he extends his claws and walks out. I want to say it's the front door or maybe it's the back door, but why not simply like stay in the house and tell you know yeah just just have one of the the people and i i realize you know the the police are also you know like they're they're getting into the house with you know they they smash the glass and then they go you know and and they pull guns on the actual owners of the house because they don't know who is and who isn't. But if, yeah, just I, what was he expecting to happen? Did did he not think that the police were close enough? Yet he could tell that they were getting into position. It just, yeah, it's again, it's the the reason that he walks out that plainly and he has his claws out is so that the cop can then shoot him, and then you know it's up to you know, Pyro and Rogue to deal with what comes next. Why do Storm and Jean not respond to the jet? I, it, they could still have written it to go badly, but, you know, with, with them still responding, but as it is, they just look like idiots. The, the, you know, I already mentioned if they, excuse me, had the had radio problems earlier. You know, how about okay, they they got to call Logan out because they seem to fix the radio, and then 
you know, the jet comes up and they try to respond, but the radio doesn't, you know, and one of them is like, I thought you fixed it. I thought I did, you know, or something, but, or just have them respond and have it still go back, you know, please respond, okay, now land the plane, you know, just, yeah, have them respond. We, we didn't do anything. This is not about that land the plane, or, you know, just something. Make the the military jets make them like, you know, they they you know it's we are in it. The the reason they're upset is the the fire fireballs and such. You know, they could still, you know, make them completely intransigent and yeah, the and that's why it doesn't work out. You know, it's it's just it's like okay, you can fly a jet, but you can't answer a radio. Are you shy? The you know, you could have them try to follow the order. You know, try to start land again. It could still you know go badly. That you know maybe it doesn't go quick enough, or maybe maybe pyro you know screws up something. You know, creates a fireball to scare them or something. I get that they don't want to, you know, you know, the, the, them not following your, maybe they don't want to give up or something, but you're risking the students' lives, at least yell seatbelts to them or something, and that actually, I timed it from the, from the first moment that it's clear that, okay, you know, they, they have 43 seconds to fasten the seatbelts, the, you know, once, once the jet is in the air, there's really no excuse to not just put on a seatbelt. You know, I get that, okay, Logan doesn't because he's, you know, he doesn't follow your rules, man. But, you know, why why don't the others just properly fasten their seatbelts, you know? And if you watch the scene carefully, when, you know, watching it and, and knowing that she's going to end up flying out the, the back, Rogue actually never does properly close her seat. You know, you see her struggling with it right after the the missile has hit, but she started to put the put her seatbelt on. You know, she she just never closed it properly. Evidently, she started to put it on earlier. The by the time the the missile hits, they've been in the air for minutes. So there's no again. Just why not just have the 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 thing break so that she so that rogue isn't just incompetent and completely reckless with her you know her own life again just have somebody's you know somebody's mutant power mess it up or something you know maybe maybe logan you know tries to help you know maybe maybe she can't quite reach once yeah, she she's having trouble reaching the, the you know part of the the seatbelt. He grabs it, reaches over, is about to close it. Then they you know hit a air speed bump, turbulence, whatever. His claws, you know, he in the shock extends his claws, cuts, you know, not her this time, but cuts part of the seatbelt off so she can't properly close it. And then you can have her just try to hold it together. And then when the missile hits, that's not enough, you know, something, but. Yeah, and you know I, I like the 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 callback on you know the rogue's hair and you know, died and you know she's she's so furious that she's about to use her powers on them although judging by the her kissing Bobby maybe it won't be so bad and. Again, having your cake and eating it too. Say what you will. Pyro did actually solve the the situation with the police, which he didn't create. You know, Ronnie was the reason the cops were there, and yeah, they've got guns on them. The only reason they're able to leave, you know, yeah, Pyro goes too far, and Rogue has to turn off the fire afterwards. But if Pyro hadn't used his powers at all, the yeah. The, they wouldn't have been able to just leave. And again, 
instead, yeah, instead of having Wolverine, you know, make such a huge mistake like that, you know, have like, yeah, let's say that, you know, they, they walk out and, yeah, maybe, maybe Pyro has already said like once or twice, I don't like cops or something, and then like, you know, yeah, and then when when he sees cops, his like his eyes go go just nuts, and he's looking at the the different ones, and you can tell oh he's about he's gonna attack with the fire or something, and you know one of the one of the cops is like really nervous and and you know draws a gun on him, and Pyro is just about to, and Wolverine is like no, and either steps in the way or tries to shake some sense into Pyro or something. The cop shoots him. And then Pyro starts attacking all of them, thus also escalating the situation. But as it is, yeah, he shouldn't have done what he did. But if he hadn't, how would they have gotten out of the situation? And... Originally, the, the fire would be put out by a storm using rain on it, but that was that was too expensive and so they instead have Rogue take ownership of her powers which is also you know you can talk about us oh, you know it's the only time she uses her powers and it's against you know someone on her own team or something you know yeah it's the the at the end of the day Rogue the way her powers work in these movies and the fact that she's not she doesn't have Miss Marvel's yeah she was never going to be that exciting in like fighting situations as far as using her power goes but in this yeah having her you know she is choosing to use her power and she is and by doing it you know that is her solving a situation that she didn't create so you know that that is good and you know even if even if she didn't need to put out the fires with his powers, one of them needed to to stop him from doing more fire stuff. And it actually, again, doesn't completely destroy him that she does that. But he does. He is clearly weakened, which is more than what happened to Bobby. I realize that it's not Professor X freezing time, but that he basically pauses everyone's mind at once, there at the very start and the very end. But I do think the movie could be clearer about it. I've I was confused the first times I watched it, and I've met many others who were confused by it, and I just I think it's easy enough to just completely avoid, you know, it's yeah, as it is, it's just kind of awkward and strange and confusing you know the the very end of the movie what you need is to put you know you, you need the documents in the president's hands to prove that Stryker was behind the you know the the assassination attempt among other things you need Xavier communicating directly to him telling him there are mutants you know Yes, we we mutants exist out there, but you and I, you know, our kinds are going to have to coexist peacefully. And it's maybe also a good idea to give him a sense that there is an entire team. And you know, you have Rogue there, so and she's proving that, you know, she she proved that she's ready for the uniform. You know, the you know when when do we get uniforms? Oh, they should be here in a couple of years because you're not old enough. But she proved that she had the, you know, in, you know, stopping Pyro and or crashing the jet, you know, but Xavier can enter your mind, period, and just make you see and think things that aren't, you know, maybe if instead of the scene we do get, how about we're told there's five minutes before they start recording and we you know we see him go over his speech some and then he like sits at his table to you know read it and he's alone in the room 
and then suddenly he's seeing Xavier and the team and then a quick cut shows that no it's just Xavier putting that image into it you know technically we only the only person we see put anyone put in you know mentally put images into others heads are it's Jason but yeah he says I would I would make you think you're an eight-year-old girl so you know it's it's confirm which you know and they, they mentioned that in the commentary track the joke there is of course Xavier would never do something like that but yeah the the you know yeah just have him project that image and then you know after a few minutes of that you know someone opens the door and sticks their head in and says okay Mr. President three minutes or something and then yeah we know that he's going to give the you know and, and yeah maybe even end it with him walking down the hall and then going in as, as we see it you know sitting down ready to read and then we're like okay so what exactly is he going to say the way it ends now but yeah and and there's absolutely no reason why the you know freezing all the minds there at the start needed to happen that was just to show that he was that powerful and that kind of thing and again it just it confuses everybody you know at, at the end of the you know I didn't do that no I did oh okay so he was the one who did it but what exactly yeah and you know the the ending is fairly optimistic considering that you know we've just had two near genocides and Toad and Sabretooth were to return in this one which and and you know remove the budget cuts and and also to not have too many mutants in the one movie which confirms they were just stunned at the end of the first movie and then you know they escaped after because when you when you look at it okay toad was struck by lightning sabretooth was thrown a lot of floors he was just unconscious for the next what was it 10 15 minutes before they leave in the jet it's not a huge you know and, and he came to and left before anyone arrived to put him in jail or maybe he fought his way out and toad was you know he washed up on shore and woke back up and yeah again it's it's not the first movie that you know kills them off really badly it's the sequels that don't follow up on it because they very clearly could have survived these things you know i mean okay electricity in you know in toad's system but there's there's some chance that he could have made it still Maybe he would have super power. No, wait. And you know the, when when they tell when when Night quotes he teleports Storm and Xavier out, but not Jason. Yeah, that's a bit. <laughs> they do actually address that in you know X Men: The Official Game, which bridges the gap between the second movie and the third movie, and of course as these time games often do has a ton of stuff that is never in the the movies whatsoever but yeah they do actually have nightcrawler feel bad about that and yeah and i suppose yeah what i'll say is this is not the only movie where brian cox plays the father of a of a child who's very difficult to deal with who projects images into the parents heads and it ends in the mother committing suicide and in you know both in this movie and the comic striker you know wants mutants to die although he may not want to just say that, you know, say that exact, I want mutants to die, and he has dozens of armed men at his command ready, even eager to kill mutants. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.